something for you to do again this week before I tell you the story. And you might need somebody's help with this, but maybe you can do it all by yourself. I wonder if you know where your pulse is. Now, sometimes you can find it by putting two fingers on your wrist. And if you find the right spot, you can feel your pulse just throbbing. Going And sometimes you can find it just about here, underneath your jaw. There's a little bit where you can feel your pulse there. And if you get the right bit with your two fingers, it's the same thing, you can feel. Now what that is, is the blood pumping through your veins or your arteries. And what makes your blood pump? You probably know, it's your heart. So your heart goes thud, 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 and it pulses the blood through your veins and your arteries. And the really important thing about that is if you can feel your pulse, you know you're alive. Now, sometimes when you look for your pulse, it's not that easy. Does that mean you're dead? No, it doesn't mean you're dead. If you're looking for your pulse, you can't be dead, can you? but it sometimes takes a little while to find it. So what I want you to do is I want you to try either trying to find your pulse on your wrist. Sometimes you get people putting their fingers around like that or put it here and see if you can feel it. And then I want you to count how many times you hear that, feel that little beat, beat pulse in a minute. Now, I want you to do that when you're just sitting still. Then I want you to jump up and down or run about a bit and then try and find your pulse and feel it and maybe count it for another minute or maybe you want to do it for just 30 seconds each time. And I want you to see, is it faster or slower? after you've run about or jumped up and down or generally done a lot of things. Does your heart beat faster or does it stay the same? Okay, off you go and do that experiment. Find your pulse, check it when you're just sitting still, then run about and check it again. Is it faster or slower or just the same? Okay. Well, I'm hoping if you've done it right, you should have been able to find that your heart beats faster after you've done some running or jumping. And so the little pulse is faster as well. So your pulse is a very important thing to find, to find out how well your heart's working. Because actually some people, when they're not terribly well, their pulse is a bit funny. It kind of jumps a bit. Or maybe if your heart beats slow and fast because you're, you're not feeling so well, you can tell a lot from the pulse. Now that does have something to do with today's story. Now you remember last week, Elijah had to pray to God for the little boy who his mother had said he was dead and Elijah had to think fast, do you remember? Well this is a story this time about Jesus. Now we know that Jesus did a lot of healing and at the beginning of this story that's really what Jesus was doing. He was doing healing and he was doing teaching and he was surrounded by lots and lots and lots of people. And suddenly one man ran up to him and the name of the man was Jairus, J-A-I-R-U-S, so Jairus. And Jairus came running up to Jesus and he said, oh, oh, please help me, please help me. Now, Jairus wasn't just any old person. Jairus was quite an important official. So you can imagine lots and lots of people in the crowd kind of moved away to let Jairus up to see Jesus. And Jairus said, please, please come with me. Oh, please, I've heard so much about you and I know that you're a healer. Will you please come with me? And Jesus said, well, yes, but why? And Jairus said, it's my daughter. My daughter, she's so very, very ill. And I know if you just come to my house, I know that you'll be able to make, him, make her well. Please come. Jesus said, well, 
looked at all the people and said, well, I think this man really needs me, so I think I must go to his house. So he started to follow Jairus to his house. Now you can imagine Jairus was really rushing and his pulse was probably getting faster and faster because he'd run to see Jesus and now he was trying to get Jesus to go very quickly to his house. But a lot of the crowd came with Jesus, I expect, because they wanted to see what he was going to do next. So you can imagine, Jairus is in the lead and Jesus is walking along slowly and carefully and lots and lots of people are all round about him. And I expect his special friends were with him as well, the 12 disciples. So can you imagine, it's quite a crowd sort of jostling. Well, as they were going along towards Jairus' house, something happened. And Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. Can you imagine what Jairus felt? Oh my goodness, he wanted Jesus to come really quickly and Jesus suddenly stopped in the middle of the road. <gasps> and Jesus said, who touched me? I know that somebody has touched my cloak or my, my the things I was wearing because I felt some of a power leaving me to someone else. Because Jesus would have been touched by lots of people because he was in the middle of a crowd. But he felt one person touching his cloak or his, his clothes. And he looked round and there was a woman. And she had her head bowed. And she said, I'm so sorry, it was me. And Jesus said, well, why did you touch my cloak or my clothes? And the woman said, I have been so ill. I've been so ill for so many years with something that is, I just can't tell people about it because it's so awful. And I didn't want to have to come and stand in front of all these people and tell you about it. I, I just thought if I could reach out and just touch you, you would be able to make me well. Jesus smiled. And my goodness, you have faith, don't you? Well, you are well. You are healed. I know you're healed because I felt you touch me and I knew what you needed. And the woman thought, I do. I feel better than I've felt for years. And she knew then that Jesus had healed her just from feeling her touch in the middle of all those people. Jesus is like that. Even though there are lots and lots of people who pray to him and ask him for things and he has all these things that he's looking after. He can hear and he can see and he knows the smallest thing about our lives. And that's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus is never too busy to hear us, to know we need his help. But that's not the end of the story because you will remember Jairus is standing on the other side thinking, could you just get to my house, please? But he was obviously just very, very worried. Jesus smiled at Jairus and said, well, shall we go on now? And they walked on a bit further. And then, oh dear, and then some of Jairus' servants came out from his house. And they said, Jairus, you needn't bother bringing the teacher, the prophet, the man that you were telling us about. You needn't bother bringing him to the house. We're so very, very sorry, Jairus, but in the time that you've been away, your daughter has died. <sighs> Can you imagine? Jairus had run all the way to Jesus. He had asked for Jesus' help. Jesus had said to the crowd, I have to go. And he had begun to walk to Jairus' house and then he had stopped for that woman. Jairus must have thought, if you hadn't stopped, my daughter might still be alive. Maybe he did think that, but he didn't say anything. He just went on walking and Jesus went on walking with him. And they didn't pay any attention to the servants about not going to the house. And Jesus walked into the house and he said to everybody, where is the little girl? And they said, well, I don't know what you want to know for because she's upstairs and she's passed away. There's nothing you can do. And they didn't just guess that she had 
died. I'll bet they did that bit with the pulse. And I'll bet they tried all over the place to try and find that pulse. And I'll bet they tried to see if the little girl was breathing. Because they would never, never have said to Jairus, your daughter's dead, unless they'd absolutely checked. So they said, she's upstairs, lying out on the bed. And Jesus said, well, I'm going up there. I'm going to go and see her. Jesus went up the stairs and he sat down on the bed. And he took the little girl's hand and he said, get up. And the little girl did. That's exactly what she did. She sat up and she was lying. And the first face she saw was the wonderfully kind face of Jesus. Not a whole lot of people all crowding into the room, which might have given her a terrible fright. Not her poor anxious father who might have come rushing through and given her a fright as well. But just kind. Jesus. And Jesus brought her downstairs and said, Do you know, I think this little girl could do with something to eat and drink. What a normal thing to do. So the little girl did just sit down and she did have something to eat and something to drink. And Jairus, can you imagine? His heart would have been so full, full of gratitude and joy and love. What a wonderful way to feel. And Jesus had said this thing to Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe. And the little girl Jairus would never need to be afraid because she and her father and the household all knew about Jesus's love and Jesus's care for them. Now you've got an opportunity to make Jairus's daughter. You can lie her flat. She was on the bed and then you can stand her up and put your fingers in there and you can walk her all the way down the stairs to go and have something to eat and something to drink. wonder if you'll get to do that over the week. I think You'll be able to see it on our page and you can cut that, print it off and cut that picture out. And we'll have another story next week. But before we finish this week, I think we should say a prayer together. And I think our prayer this week could be about people who are sick or people who are anxious about being sick. I think there's quite a lot of people with coughs and colds and feeling a bit sorry for themselves just now. I think there's a lot of colds going about. So maybe we can pray for them too. So let's close our eyes and we'll ask Jesus to be close to those people who aren't well. Dear Jesus, we can't all be well every day all the time. Sometimes we get colds, sometimes we get sore stomachs, Sometimes we get headaches. and Sometimes we just don't feel very well. Dear Jesus, help us to know that you are sitting by our bedsides all the time. That your kind and caring face is watching over us. And that you want us to know that your love and care is with us every day. And Lord, we think of other people who may be feeling very sick are very poorly and maybe think that nobody is going to be able to make them better. Lord, give them peace in their hearts and help them to feel your presence right beside them every day. We know that you love everyone and we ask that you bring that love to everyone. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, see you next week. Bye.